I welcome this opportunity to participate here which this conference, which I believe should be able to enrich our understanding of the last 25 years. More particularly, what the impact of the last 25 years has been in changing the lives of our people. But one also hopes that this dialogue will also contribute to enable us to form a common vision with regard to the next 25 years. One welcomes this opportunity because a number of organizations are now engaged in examining what the past 25 years have meant to the people of South Africa. The ANC is finalizing a document entitled 25 Year Review of ANC Policy Implementation. At government level, we will soon be publishing a 25 year review. And the President's Office, the President's Parliamentary Office, has just concluded a report entitled Respis Prospis, which is in Latin, which means examine the past, the present, and the future, which in many ways examines the extent to which Parliament has passed laws to implement the policies of the governing party and its manifestos. So what we are doing today will add to the wealth of knowledge about the past 25 years, and in some ways, a number of other institutions are going to be doing the same. And so this review process of the last 25 years will soon become a national sport, and let us all participate in this sport today. Now the issue of determining the impact of what we would call the National Democratic Revolution over the past 25 years is in some ways reminiscent of the moment when Henry Kissinger in 1972 met Premier, the Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai and it is said that he asked him what he, Zhou Enlai, thought or believed was the impact of the French Revolution. It is said that Zhou Enlai took a deep breath and after a pregnant silence said, it is too early to tell. <laughs> Given that the French Revolution of 1789 had occurred nearly 200 years before, Zhou Enlai was expressing the long view of history in a very witty and Oscar Wildean way. News of this quote by Zhou in life immediately flew around the chattering classes in the West, and it soon became used as evidence that the Chinese, especially the Chinese intellectuals and leaders, took a long view of things that they were a patient civilization, and that when they thought about the future, they always thought about the future in hundreds of years, and not in just a few years. Could we say that examining what our nation has been through in the past 25 years could be termed as being too early to tell? Is patience one of our key attributes as a nation, one would ask, are we able to look back and say what we've been through needs to be looked at much more analytically in the next 25 years or in the next 100 years? But this engagement is essential if we are to arrive at an understanding of what the 25 years and the past has been and what it has meant so that we can forge what I would call a durable and a lasting understanding across society of what these 25 years have meant and how we need to craft a vision for a future for the next 25 years. But this conference fulfills a dual purpose. Firstly, it is an opportunity for us to assess progress 
towards the achievement of our overall and overarching vision. A vision of our national democratic revolution, which is a vision to have a non-racial, non-sexist, democratic, prosperous, and free society. Secondly, it is a platform to identify the challenges, the opportunities and tasks of the present, as well as the future. And in reflecting on these issues, it would be important to consider the priorities, the tasks, as well as the recommendations contained in some of our national plans. And we've had quite a number of national plans, such as the Re Reconstruction and Development Program, and others, but more especially our current plan, the National Development Plan. Based on our extensive, on an extensive diagnostic report which provided what many people regarded as a very frank assessment of the state of our nation, the National Development Plan sets out a clear vision to 2030. It is our hope that this conference would also give attention to the program that we have set out for the term of the sixth democratic administration. Through the State of the Nation address and departmental budget votes that have just concluded, we have described the measures that we will define, that will define our developmental pathway for the next five years and beyond. Research and academic institutions have a critical role to play in advising government, in providing the necessary data, and in terms also of informing our planning models. As I said in the State of the Nation address a few weeks ago, this is a government that is not afraid of new ideas. And in fact, it is a government that is welcoming to new ideas. And we are also welcoming to new ways of thinking. And our engagement with intellectuals and academic people is a clear proof of that. We want as many ideas as possible to be put on the table. We do want to work with key role players and especially intellectuals to bring added rigor to the work of government. We look to you to continue to be a voice of both sensibility and conscience, but also of criticism in our national life. In his famous Wraith Lecture series on the representations of the intellectual, Edward Said posited the role of the public intellectual against what he termed the insiders. It is these insiders, he said, who mold public opinion, make it conformist, and encourage reliance on a superior little band of all-knowing men in power. The public intellectual, by contrast, does not promote special interests, but is at the forefront of questioning patriotic nationalism corporate thinking, and a sense of class, racial, and gender privilege. The role of the public intellectual goes beyond speaking truth to power, important as that may be. It is about providing social analysis that challenges the status quo, that interrogates the influence of vested interests in public life, and that is concerned with the production and dissemination of knowledge that is interventionist by nature. Today, we ask that such critical analysis be directed at our experience of the 25 years of nation building. There is very little contestation throughout the country on the assertion that South Africa is a vastly different place to what it was in 1994. As a 2018 report published by the South African Institute of Race Relations notes, 
we are sometimes too modest about our achievements. A report titled, Life in South Africa, Reasons for Hope, which report was drafted and led by Kelebo Khile Liepile. I saw that she's on the program some uh, in later on uh, during this conference. This report highlights the remarkable progress we have made in providing a number of basic services to the people of our country, also in providing assets to the poor, in reviving and transforming our economy, in opening the doors of education and learning, in advancing non-racialism and non-sexism, and in cementing a democratic constitutional order. <clears throat> 